In a previous project, I found a free TV and turned it into a giant solar scorcher. This shoots out a deadly beam of sunlight that's hot enough to abuse food, melt metal, and burn things you probably shouldn't. Let's say this beaker full of very warm water is a source of heat. Here's a special type of engine, a Stirling engine named after the Stirling brothers who invented it, got a patent in 1807. The heat from this water is warming the bottom plate of this engine. Give it a little nudge. The engine will run. Now notice there are two pistons. There's this little one up here, the primary, and then there's this big one down here. Hi everybody, this is Arrow from Arrow the Adventurer. And recently I posted a video on turning solar energy directly into mechanical energy. I'm taking two concepts, um, one very old, one kind of old, which is the oldest one is the magnifying glass. And the other is the Stirling engine. Because the problem with the Stirling engine is, well, you need a heat source or an energy source. And traditionally, people have burnt things um, to make steam or smoke to um, push the pistons. But as it turns out, with solar energy and the sun, you can actually, if you have a big enough magnification glass, um, you can generate that same heat without burning anything particular. Um, except for the water, which could actually be recycled back down, kind of like a distillery. Um, so you would catch it, not let it escape, and then it recondenses to come back down to the chamber to be um, basically how um, <laughs> the earth works. <laughs> Who would have thought that? Who came up with that? Anyways, um, I digress. Um, I'll forget. Okay, that's the intro to what I was going to say. Give me a second. Pause. So, what's up, guys? I'm back. I had to take a pause for the calls because I kind of had to do the intro, which wasn't my main part. And then I forgot my main part because I was doing the intro because it's the science to my case. But anyways, so, let's say you take those two concepts of using solar power um, to direct heat onto something like water to generate the steam to power the sternum engine. And then you say, oh, but what about the sun? Because the sun moves. And this is where things get interesting because what I see there is the practical reason for an actual clock and that would I'm not gonna say that would explain our obsession with time but if you take a clock and then you put it on its back like a sundial and then you take the same two concepts that I already told you about with the magnifying oh it moves just like the sun so if you took those same two concepts of the magnifying glass and a sterling engine and then you put it on another old concept the clock which moves around every so often like you know um our rotation a revolution our particular rotation as earth and then our um revolution around the sun um in addition to other planetary bodies um that's what the clock does so if you took those two things but so if you took those three things and put it together you basically have free energy on a non-technological level very simple science <laughs> that could have been easily achieved a hundred years ago with enough practice. Would that have been perfect at first? No. Would it be perfect at first? No. No. But with enough minds on it, I imagine it um, could be perfected. Um, but this is Arrow from Arrow the Adventure.com. Um, 
subscribe, follow, Twitter, um, go to my website, I accept donations, keep my channel going. Have a great night. Bye. <laughs> EverlyAventure.com In a previous project, I found a free TV and turned it into a giant solar scorcher. This shoots out a deadly beam of sunlight that's hot enough to abuse food, melt metal, and burn things you probably shouldn't. Let's say this beaker full of very warm water is a source of heat. Here's a special type of engine, a Stirling engine named after the Stirling brothers who invented it, got a patent in 1807. The heat from this water is warming the bottom plate of this engine. Give it a little nudge. The engine will run. Now notice there are two pistons. There's this little one up here, the primary, and then there's this big one down here. 